Quarter past two, and time for today's afternoon play. Can romance overcome the culture gap when Africa comes to Aberdeen? The Museum by Leila Abu Leila. Culture shock. That's what you have, Shadja. Culture shock. He has a ponytail and an earring. Don't you find that strange? Yes, but we're in a different part of the world. Things are likely to be strange. You're right. Now, what do I type? The name of the file where you have your data. Thanks, Asafa, for helping me with this. The computer assignments are easy. It's the other subjects I'm worried about. Me too. Do you know his name? Who? The guy with the earring. Brian. Now you have to choose your variables and click on the test statistics you want to run. Did you see him today in class, squashing paper into a ball and aiming it at the bin? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why doesn't he just walk to the bin like everyone else does? He's pretending it's a basketball. The paper is the ball, and the bin is the basket. <laughs> and when he misses, he mumbles under his breath like it's the end of the world. That's just immaturity or shyness. I don't understand it. Half the time, I don't understand anything in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> you know what、uh, happened to me the other day? There's that mirror in the bathroom. It has printed on it. This is the face of someone with HIV. I had to read it twice to figure out what it meant. What does it mean? Last year, a Nigerian on this very same course killed himself. That's terrible. I don't believe you. Miriam, why would I make something like that up? Shadia, Shadia, did you hear this?、Hmm? She's not with us at all. I'm sorry, Atifa. I'm just looking something up. What are you doing with the course booklet when we've already chosen our subjects? I want to drop the time series, Miriam. You can't. It's a compulsory subject. Oh dear. You can drop multivariate analysis. I did. I like multivariate analysis. It's the time series that I haven't got a clue about. I just stare at the board. The only thing I can tell is this is alpha, this is sigma. Yes, but how does this formula lead to this? We had a nightmare last night about failing the exams, and we're only in September. <laughs> Look, everyone is struggling. This is one of the toughest courses on offer, but at the end they'll treat us fairly. <laughs> British universities encourage overseas students. Oh, and what about the Nigerian last year? He was one who weakened. What about him? I was just telling Miriam he committed suicide. How awful! How did he do it? Oh, notice that she's asking how he did it, not why he did it. Oh, please, <laughs> Miriam. <laughs> He cut his wrists. Poor guy. Yes. He must have had other pressures too, on top of his studies. Most probably he did. So who told you about the student Asafa? Did you hear about it back in Nigeria? I'm not Nigerian. Can't you tell he's Ethiopian? <laughs> well, how can I tell? All you Africans look alike. Ah,、oh, Miriam. No, we don't. <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of Ethiopians in Sudan. That's how I recognised Asafa straight away.、Oh. Because of civil war in Ethiopia, a lot of refugees came into Sudan. You see, Miriam, Sudan is one of the poorest countries, and yet they open their doors wide to Ethiopian refugees. It's because we couldn't control our borders, rather than because of the kindness of our heart. <laughs> I won't agree with you. I'm a Pan-African, one continent, one people. Oh, now you say you're one people, and when I said all Africans look alike, you didn't like it. It's nothing to do with looks. Well, at least here in Aberdeen, every Scottish person who sees either of you knows you're African. In my case, one day they think I'm Persian, one day they say Mediterranean. You look very European to me, Miri. Oh, thank you, Asafa. Go tell that to the EU. For years now, Turkey's been wanting to get into the EU, and it's no, no. We Turks are not European enough for them. Is it eleven yet?、Mm, no, not yet. I've still got some time then. I have to see my children into their new school. I brought them with me. My <laughs> wife and three sons. I wouldn't have guessed you had children, Asafa. You don't look that old. Thank you, Miriam. 
I'm a lot older than anyone else on this course. Shadja here looks like she just walked out of high school. <laughs> no, I don't. You don't wear makeup. That's why you look younger. Miriam, you're the only one out of all the lecturers and students who wears makeup. But I don't understand here why the women are so careless with their appearance. In Turkey, we put effort into our clothes and hair. Where do you find the time for all this? Oh, look, if there was a nuclear war going on, I still remember to put on my lipstick. <laughs> it's a matter of principle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you can't be finding this course as difficult as I am. Of course I'm finding it difficult. The British system of teaching is completely different than what I was used to in Istanbul. But I've never done some of the topics before. And every day we get bombarded with new stuff. It's difficult for all the overseas students, Shadja, especially the African ones. We come from a system of education where there just aren't enough resources. How many Africans can afford textbooks or calculators? It's not that in my case. I went to a private school. I just feel that there are gaps in what I know. Well, you can fail one subject and still get the degree. Oh, I think I'm going to fail them all. Listen, you're overreacting. I know the university has high academic standards, but they're not cruel. Well, let's hope not. Well, they're not out to fail students. After all, they need overseas students as much as we need them. Look at our class. Apart from one Scottish guy, we're all foreigners. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Actually, if there's anyone who's going to pass with a distinction, it's Brian. He knows his stats inside out. Oh, he's excellent. Brian, with the earring. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told you, the earring doesn't mean anything. He did his undergraduate degree here and got first class honors. Wow! That gives him an advantage. He knows the lecturers, he knows the system. Well, maybe if I borrow Brian's notes of last year, they'll help me. Ah, oh, that's an idea. He doesn't seem very friendly, though. He said hello to me once and then completely ignored me the next day. <laughs> Today I said hello to him and he was so taken aback. His face went red and he just stared at me. <laughs> this is the famous British Reserve they told us about. <laughs> In the handbook for overseas students. <laughs> Did you notice Brian wears the same shirt every day? Grey and white stripes. Yes, there's a t-shirt too, a blue one. <laughs> but when the striped shirt is in the washing. <laughs> <laughs> what I can't understand about Brian is how so Someone so intelligent can sit all by himself in the cafeteria, day in and day out, reading that parochial local paper they have here. Yes, he never sits with us. You know, I've never before seen a man with an earring and such long hair. <laughs> Sudan must be very conservative then. Turkey is a Muslim country too, but it's not so conservative. His hair distracts me during lectures. I keep staring at his ponytail. Oh, <laughs> what is there to stare at? Well, his hair moves whenever he writes and then looks up at the board. <laughs> I had a doll once with exactly the same kind of hair, the same color too. <laughs> she was my favorite doll. I used to spend hours combing her hair, stroking it. <laughs> Brian? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Shadja. Hi. I was wondering if I could borrow your notes. Uh, these ones? No, the ones you did last year. All right. Which ones? Time series, also Markov chains. I've never done them before, and you all did. At least that's what Dr. Williams is assuming. She's just going on, and I oh, can't I, even... I, I don't have them. Oh. Well, it doesn't matter. When I go home at the weekend, I can get them for you. Oh, Right. Well, thanks. So, you didn't, you didn't do Markov chains before? No. There was a student strike in my university in Khartoum, and we lost months of classes. Really? Yes. You got full marks in the test. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, well... I won't tell you the grade I got. Which questions do you have trouble with? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you haven't done Markov chains before, it's natural to get stuck, because they're the background. They're pretty easy, Markov chains, once you get the basic idea. What is the basic idea? <laughs> I don't even know that. Well, uh, the chain is made up of different states, and then uh, we're looking at the, the probability of movement between these states. P-I-J is the m probability of moving from state I to state J? Yeah. What does P-J-J -J mean? Uh, that means the probability of staying in the same state, moving from J to J, which is really no movement at all. I see. 
Oh, well, thanks, Brian. Shaja, um, do you like it here? Here? You mean the university or Aberdeen? Both. Either. It's all right. You must find it cold. Yes, it's <laughs> freezing. You're used to warm tropical weather. Oh, no. There's nothing tropical about Sudan. It's desert. Is it? I didn't know that. Isn't it cold, Miriam, sitting out here? Oh, I'm not allowed to smoke in the building. I had given up, but now this course. You go ahead to the library if you want to. No, I'll stay with you. Do you remember, Shadia? I told you I applied for some jobs. Yes. Did you hear anything back? Yes, I've been invited for an interview. Miriam, that's wonderful. Who is? It's an oil company. I didn't think an oil company would need statistician, but there you go. When is your interview? Tuesday. I wonder if I should wear my red blazer or not. Mm. Maybe red is too eastern for them. Hardly anyone wears red here. You're right. They like dark colors. <laughs> colors that match the weather. <laughs> what are you going to do when you graduate? Well, I was working in Khartoum University, so I'll go back to that. And I'm going to get married. I didn't know you were engaged. You're not wearing a ring, or, or, or don't you have that custom in Sudan? No, I do have a ring, but I took it off. It kept slipping, and I was afraid I'd lose it. I must have lost weight. It fitted me fine in Khartoum. So, is your engagement a traditional one, or did you two fall in love? <laughs> no, it's traditional. <laughs> Karim was looking for a wife. His sisters showed him all their friends, one by one. He didn't like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> then his mother saw me at a wedding. Ah, so his mother was the clever one then. Yes, and my mother encouraged me to accept him. It was enough for her to know that Karim has a Mercedes and the 7-Up franchise, and she was saying, grab him, Sharia. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my mother is a real character. Then behind his back, she says he's nouveau riche. So how does Karim feel about you coming to study here? Well, the first time I told him about it, we had gone to see how the house was coming along. He's building a house. So, the downstairs part was for my mother, and all this is ours. Wow, it's huge. It only looks bigger because we've got the dining room and the sitting room open plan. Whereas downstairs, they are separate rooms. The area is exactly the same. I want to see the balcony. The ledge is too low. It's ridiculous. Anyone can fall off. They're going to have to raise it. Look, you can see the Nile. Just about. We'll be able to see it better in the rainy season. Do you think the house will be finished by then? I don't know, Shazia. I hope so. Every stage seems to take longer than the one before. The electrician is waiting for the plumber, the plumber is held up waiting for the joiner, and so on. It's taking forever. Karim, there's something I need to tell you. <laughs> what is it? You don't want to go ahead with the wedding? <laughs> of course I do. You don't like it that my mother is going to be living downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> I love your mother and her cooking. She's fond of you too. So what is it? You're going to Aberdeen to do the postgraduate course. Yes. How did you know? Your mother phoned me up at work. She gave me a long lecture about how I mustn't be an obstacle to your career. Ah. I didn't know she was going to do that. I'm sorry, Karim. She had a lot to say about how she gave up her education to marry your father and look where it got her, etc., etc. Everything she says now, every conversation goes back to my dad and his new wife. She goes on and on. She'll get over it, eventually. She still cries in her sleep. It wakes me up. I can't wait till we get married. Then I can get away. Oh, Shadia, look, you don't have to go and do that course in Scotland. But I do. It will get me promoted at work. You don't know about these things. Why? Because the only place I've worked was in my father's factory until it became mine? Well, you have It's not easy, not in these times. Getting that 7-Up franchise was great, but the paper factory, it's just breaking even. Come on, you're loaded. Everyone knows your dad left you a fortune. It's assets, Shazia, not liquidity. Whatever. 
Look, if I don't take this chance, I might never get another one. And look at the house. It still needs work. We'll never be able to get married until it's finished. That's true. I really didn't think Aberdeen University would accept me. I told myself not to hope too much. Then I got the letter. It made me so happy. I brought it to show you. I've left my glasses in the car. I'll look at it later. How long will you be away? Just nine months. Just? In some universities, it takes a whole year. You're going to travel halfway across the world by yourself. You're going to be all alone for nine months in Europe. Yes. <laughs> I'm very broad-minded to allow you to do this. A lot of men wouldn't put up with this. How come you didn't take the notes? Which notes? My time series notes of last year. You said you wanted them. Yes, I do. Well, they're in the folder. The folder you slid across the table? Yeah. I wasn't sure whether it was for me or not. Uh, well, it's obvious, isn't it? It's right in front of you. You didn't say anything. What is there to say? Well, you could have said something like, here are the notes. Here are the notes? Why? Why what? Well, why should I say something so obvious? Because, I don't know. Because it's reassuring, that's why. Then, to be polite, I would say, thank you very much, I'm sorry to have put you through all this trouble. What? No, you don't just shrug. You say something like, it's no trouble at all. Well, it was, actually. What? It was some trouble to get, get you these notes. My, my, my parents have just moved house and my stuff is in storage. I had to look through piles of books and papers and rubbish I've had for years with a stupid flashlight because for some reason or other the light in the attic wouldn't work. And then... I'm sorry you had to go out of your way like this. Well, look, before the whole day is wasted, let, let, me, let me show you what's in the folder. OK. This is all the time series I did last year. Oh, it looks kind of familiar. Yeah. Well, it's an introduction to what we're doing now. And the notes for the stochastic processes are in there, too. Queuing theory. I've done that before. Markov chains. That's what I really need. Mm. Your handwriting is so clear. It's like a child's. <laughs> Sorry. It's just because it's large and the letters are rounded. You leave gaps on the page. These are such lovely notes. Shazia, it's Karim here. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'm so glad you called. I promised you I'd call, didn't I? How's the study? It's okay. I've borrowed some of last year's notes and I'm beginning to understand. Things are getting clearer. That's good. Shadia, look, I'm in the process of buying bathroom suites for the house. My mother wants hers blue. What colour do you want ours to be? I don't know, Karim. Anything, really. If I get ours in blue too, then I would be able to get a discount. Yes, blue is nice. <laughs> OK, we'll go for blue then. You are a very easygoing fiancé. Am I? Yeah. My mother is fussing over our house more than you are. Brian! Uh -huh. Thanks for the notes. They're really good. Oh, they helped you? Yes, a lot. I think I might not fail my exams after all. Oh, you won't, Shadia. You're bright. I've been studying your notes late at night. Then I had this really weird dream. I dreamt I was a variable. <laughs> I was turned into this variable. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Epsilon. <laughs> and then I had to move in discrete space from state I to state J. <laughs> I've had dreams like that before. It's like being inside a computer game. It's so weird and it wasn't even scary. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up and I think I've been doing mathematical proofs in my head, solving equations. And this only happens to me during exam time, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> Look... Would you like to go for a coffee? Um, 
I don't know. I... Why not? Well, it's because of your earring. M my earring? Yes. <laughs> it's an obstacle. M what kind of obstacle? I can't tell you. Why not? It wouldn't be polite. Besides, it's none of my business. Well, let me guess then. Guess. Uh, you don't like the earring? Yes. Well, <laughs> I can take it off. Just like that? Yeah, yeah, I can do that right now. See? No earring. <laughs> now you have a scar. It's red. Oh, it'll heal. So, that obstacle's out the way. <laughs> but I don't like your hair being so long. Right. This page and this page, Daria. Up to here is the notes you missed. Miriam, your handwriting is awful. I can't read it. I'll read it out to you then. Why are you so late? Oh, it was just the bus and the awful rain. Then I walk into class, I sit down, and before I sort myself out, I get the shock of looking up and finding no ponytail. <laughs> Every single lecturer notices Brian cut his hair. Wow, he looks so different. <laughs> Short hair, no earring. For weeks now, I've been sitting behind him in his ponytail. Then suddenly today, I look up... And it's just his neck and the collar of his grey shirt. Well, you're the one who told him you didn't like it. I didn't think he'd listen to me. Now, come on. Write what you've missed. I have to go to the careers office. I haven't got all day. Indiscriminate analysis. A linear combination of variables serves as the basis... Serves as the basis... For assigning cases to groups. But he really looks so decent now. I told him. I couldn't help it. I told him he looks nice. You have to find a weighted average. Oh, come on, Shadia, stop dreaming. You have to find a weighted average. Of variables. That doesn't make sense. A weighted average of variables. Right. The funny thing, he comes up to me after class and says, I've cut my hair. As if it's not as clear as daylight. <laughs> it was difficult not to laugh. The weights are estimated in such a way that they result in the best separation between the groups. You're going too fast. They result in the best separation between the groups. I suppose I'll now have to go and have coffee with him. It's as if I promised. Coffee isn't a big thing. Why are you making a big thing out of this? Because in Khartoum, I wouldn't have coffee with anyone like him. My mother is so strict about who I can be friends with. She wants me to be friends with people higher up. She keeps saying, how else will you and your sisters marry well? Mm, how else would you have had your grand engagement party at the Hilton? Exactly. Does Brian know you're engaged to Karim? No, he doesn't. I didn't tell him, don't look at me like that. I have no intention of being nice to Brian. I'll act cool and distant. And he'll be put off. I have a feeling you don't mean this. Now, come on, copy out the formulas yourself. Okay. Imagine he cut his hair. For me. <sighs> Just for me. So, where is Sudan? In Africa. Do you know where that is? Ms. Chaja, I know Sudan is in Africa. I meant where exactly in Africa? Northeast, south of Egypt. Where are you from? Peterhead. It's north of Aberdeen, by the sea. By the sea? I bet that doesn't mean sandy beaches and palm trees. <laughs> no, the shore is rocky. But there are dolphins in the water. Really? Yeah. Does your father work in Peterhead? Yes, he does. What does he do, your father? My dad's a joiner. Oh, a joiner. And your mother? Does she work? Only part-time. She's a lollipop lady. My father is a doctor, a specialist. And my mother comes from a very big family, a ruling family. If you British hadn't colonised us, my mother would have been a princess now. Well, that's not hard to believe. You walk like a princess. You mean I'm conceited and proud? No, I didn't mean that at all. Brian, are you always this quiet? What? You don't talk much. No, when I was at school, I wasn't keen on all these subjects where you had to do a lot of talking about the topic and write essays. <laughs> like history. Yeah, <laughs> history and English. I like maths because it didn't need words and because it made sense. There was always one right answer. I know what you mean. I hated history, but I hated PE even more. Why? I'm not good at sports. 
I go rowing every weekend on the River Dee. I belong to a rowing club. I saw that Dee River. Compared to the Nile, it's nothing. It's just a stream. Really? Yes. If you want to row in a real river, you should row in the Nile. Uh, I've never travelled before. I mean, not outside Scotland. I should have gone down south for this course. Uh, but if I dragged doing my postgraduate in the same uni. Oh. So what we're taking is easy for you. No, it isn't easy. It's challenging. But still, it's a continuation. It's nothing new. You're lucky you've travelled. I think I'd, I'd like to get away from Scotland. Maybe you will. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll go and see the Nile. In Khartoum, there's an island. A small island in the middle of the Blue Nile. You can get there by ferry or even row. It's so close, that island. Even from the shore, you can see its houses and palm trees. Do you get homesick? That's a strange question. Well, you sounded a bit homesick. There are people I should miss, but I don't miss them that much. Instead, I miss other things. The Azam, the Muslim call to prayer, I don't know if you know about it. I miss it very much. At dawn, it used to wake me up. I would hear the words, prayer is better than sleep, and just go back to sleep. I never got up to pray. <laughs> we did Islam in school. I went on a trip to Mecca. What? You've been to Mecca? In a book. Oh. <laughs> What's your religion? Oh, I don't know. Nothing, I suppose. That's terrible. That's really terrible. Well... I'm sorry. It's none of my business. Oh, that's... It's okay. If you don't have any religion, why don't you become a Muslim, then? Well, maybe. I wouldn't mind travelling to Mecca. I was keen on that book. I can't believe you said that. Why? Because in the West, they hate Islam. How do you know? Everyone knows it's common knowledge. There's a theory connecting how an idea spreads to stochastic processes. An idea is like an epidemic spreading through a population. How and how fast an epidemic spreads follows probability rules. Hey, wait a minute. This isn't in our course, is it? No, not really. It's not going to come up in the exams? Oh, no. Then don't tell me anything about it. It'll just muddle my mind. Sometimes, after lectures, Professor Dutton says to me, let's go for a drink. You're very friendly with your advisor, Asafa. I am, Shaja, yes. Uh, so there's Professor Dutton and I sitting in the pub, and I'm saying something about my children going to Sunday school. Then he asks me, you're a Christian, Asafa? I say, yes, I am, and I'm a Catholic to boot. <laughs> then he says, sure you don't believe in all that cod's water. It was so funny. I said, yes, I do. Asafa, how can you laugh? He's so mean to say that to you. No, no, Professor Dutton's not mean. He's just saying what he thinks. It was all very spontaneous. If one of the lecturers said to me that Islam was codswallop, I'd burst into tears. Shaja, you're oversensitive. I can't help it. It's not a good thing. Look, my sons are the only black children in their school. I say to them... If anyone teases you, don't let it bother you. Take things in your stride. I suppose you're right. We need to have thick skins. Oh, it's such pressure being here. And I'm beginning to feel guilty, too. Guilty? About what? I add up the money I've spent in a week, and I think, back in Sudan, this can keep a whole family alive. Shaja, don't do these calculations. If I pick up anything on this table, a roll of bread, even a packet of sugar... It's three, five times the price in Ethiopia. We'll go mad making these comparisons. You're right. Look who's coming over to join us. Who? He's never sat with us overseas students before. It must be because of you. Hi, Shaja. Hi, Brian. Hey, Brian, come and sit here. I'll move over. Oh, thanks. We were talking about Asafa's advisor. Professor Dutton. He's a big name in his field, isn't he? Mm, yeah, he's going to have a formula named after him. You're kidding. Honest? It's in his latest paper. Well, I definitely have to look that up. You know, Professor Dutton was once in Ethiopia. I felt proud when he told me that. What was he doing there? He went for a conference. I had, I had a friend who went to Ethiopia. He went with one of the aid agencies at the time of the famine. What did he think of it? Hell. He hated it. He hated the climate, his work. And on top of that, he came back ill, really ill. 
He doesn't like talking about it much now. But I said to him, what do you expect? You're going to Africa in the middle of a famine. What do you expect? Well, it can't have been nice for him to be ill away from home. No, he took it hard. Well, I'm off to the library to look for that paper. See you later. Bye, Arthur. Bye. Brian, let me show you something written in Arabic. It's a letter from my father. You understand this? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> See, that's my name here. It's written from right to left. This looks like Sigma. It's not Sigma. You're obsessed with stats. Well, what is it then? It's the letter H. Huh. Well, Sigma's a letter too. What's that printed stuff on top? The heading. It's headed paper from my dad's surgery. Remember? I was showing off and told you he was a specialist. Yeah. Well, he's a gynecologist. Really? Oh, no. You're laughing too. Back home, my friends used to make jokes about it, but I thought that here, people wouldn't laugh. No, we would. Well, it's been some time since anyone laughed about it. My dad fell in love with one of his patients and married her. It's not nice, the whole thing. My mother doesn't like me to visit them. But I still do behind her back. Now you sound homesick again. Do I? Yeah. Look, I was thinking, um, there's this museum about Africa, not far from here. We can go there. I mean, if you'd like to go there. Have you been there before? No, I haven't. Is tomorrow all right? I'd feel guilty going with you. Why? Because... Because I should be studying. Oh, come on. That'll only be a few hours. Please... Shadja is Karim. Oh. What's wrong? I was on my way out, just walking out the door. <laughs> I thought you never go out at the weekends. I don't usually, but something came up. Well, how are you? I miss you. I'm fine. How are you? I've got good news. The house is finally shaping up, and it should be ready when you get back. Yesterday, I took your mother to see it, and she was impressed. That's good. Listen, Shaja, I was thinking, uh, you should do some shopping for the house. Uh, get things that aren't available in Khartoum. I want you to buy some of the fixtures for the bathrooms. You know, taps and towel hangers. Uh, these kind of things. I'll send you the money, and I'll email you a list of what I want. Exactly. I can't. Uh, what do you mean, you can't? You just go into any large department store or a DIY shop. I can't, Karim. I wouldn't know where to put these things once I buy them or how to send them. These are just minor issues. We sort them out a step at a time. I just don't have the time for this kind of thing. I'm so busy. Just a minute ago, you said you were going on your way out. Yes. Where to, if I may ask? A museum. A museum? <laughs> Since when do you like museums? Well... Listen, you have time to go to a museum and you don't have time to get a few things for the house you and I are going to live in? Does this make sense? No, it doesn't, Karim. Okay, you're right. Shadia, we'd be silly to lose such an opportunity. You can get very good things in the UK. I was thinking gold would be good. It would match the blue in the bathroom. Gold? Gold toilet seats? Are you crazy? People are going to burn in hell for eating out of gold dishes and you want to sit on gold? <laughs> Who said anything about toilet seats? You're joking with me, aren't you? No, I'm not. Shadia, we can't waste a long-distance call bickering. I know, I know that. So be reasonable. You know something? Last year, there was a Nigerian student doing the same course I'm doing, and he committed suicide. What does this have to do with anything? Sometimes, I think I'm not coping. It's stressful, everything, not just the work. Georgia, you just need to hang on for a little bit longer. Then you'll get this master's degree you're so desperate to get, and it'll all be over. I suppose so. Okay, listen. About the list. It will be gold taps for the bathtub and the basin. Gold? Gold taps in a country where some people literally starve? It's a colour, Shadia! 
Gold colored, not 24 karat gold. Gold colored, it's smart. It's not right. Allah is going to punish us for this. Since when have you become religious? Brian! Oh, I was beginning to think you wouldn't turn up. I'm sorry, Brian. The phone rang just as I was going out. You're wearing a new shirt. Yeah, it's new. Come on, let's go inside. I think we just go up the stairs. Then. I thought you had to pay to get into museums. Not this one. <gasps> I almost thought he was real, not made of wax. That's the way the lights are put in the display camera. It's clever. Victorian traveller bringing back all these things from Africa in a trunk. We have to start with this poster first and then go around the room that way. You read it. During the 18th and 19th centuries, North East Scotland made a disproportionate impact on Africa by contributing so many skilled and committed individuals. In serving an empire, they gave and received, changed others and were themselves changed. So all these statues and copper pots are the stuff they brought back with them? Yeah. These rolls are papyrus. I know. They have them in the National Museum in Khartoum. Do you know how they make the papyrus into paper? No. Do you think in my school in Khartoum I wrote on papyrus? No, oh, I was just asking. This one looks like you. Which one? The soldier in the picture. The one who served in East Africa. No, he doesn't. He does? But his expression is different, sneering, looking down. Ah, oh, they must have been brave, those explorers. If I'd have been alive then, I'd have gone to Africa. As what? A colonialist? Why, anything. I'd be going for the adventure. I thought I'd see something familiar, like pictures of minarets or boats on the Nile. It's disappointing. Why don't you like the atmosphere? Dark and mysterious. There's nothing dark and mysterious about Khartoum. It's bright sunlight and everyone knows what everyone else is up to. Well, we haven't looked at everything yet. In a photo, we wouldn't look nice together. What? Nothing. If I could go inside this cabinet, I wouldn't make a good exhibit, would I? I'm too modern, with my head full of stats. You say the strangest things. The African mind... What? Look, accuracy is abhorrent to the African mind. Here, let's... Accuracy is abhorrent to the African mind. His brain is different to that of the European. It has a shorter growing period and possesses less well-formed cells than that of the European. This is why the European is a natural logician. The mind of an African, on the other hand, is eminently wanting in symmetry. Well, that explains why I'm struggling with the course and why you're sailing through it. You can't prove that. Why not? Because you'd have to have a statistically controlled experiment. Random samples, significance tests, the usual. Come on, let's go upstairs. Let go of my arm. All right. Why, you're not, you're not upset by all that 19th century stuff, are you? I am. Come on. It's just old ideas. I know Asafa said I mustn't be oversensitive. And he's right. How am I supposed to feel when I hear the African mind is wanting in symmetry? Well, you should find it funny, that's all. Do you find it funny? Yeah. Yes, I, I suppose I do. Let's go and see what they have upstairs. Real ones, huh? It's neat. It's frightening. They're antique now. I mean, they never work. I'd rather not have a row of guns aiming at me. They were made here in Scotland, and then they were taken by ships to Africa. Ah, oh, a craftsmanship that's perfect, isn't it? I don't know how you can admire something that kills people. I'm going to look at the section about animals. It's difficult to imagine anything more satisfactory or better worth taking part in than a lion drive. 
We rode back to camp feeling very well indeed. Archie was quite right when he said that this was the first time since we had started that we have really been in Africa. The real Africa of jungle inhabited only by game and plains where herds of antelope meet your eye in every direction. Shadja? What's wrong? Nothing. You're crying. It doesn't matter. Why are you crying? All this stuff here, it makes me feel small. Shadja. I shouldn't be here. Look, you're letting this museum get you. You mustn't. But what they're saying isn't true. What isn't true? Africa isn't all jungles and antelope. I know that. Everyone knows that today it isn't like that. What's it like? Well, for a start, some of these animals are endangered. And then, you know, there's modern things. Civil war, AIDS, famine. It's not all horrible like that. Well, just ask anyone what comes into their head when they think of Africa, and these are the first things they'd say. Well, these aren't the first things I would say. Well... You're not exactly representative of the general population, are you? What's that supposed to mean? But you're upper class, aren't you? Just because you're spoiled doesn't mean that no one else is suffering. I didn't say that. I didn't say that no one is suffering. I'm saying that it's not safari and lions, it's people. That's what Africa is. People. Well, but th that's just what I said. People fighting civil wars. People dying of AIDS. People hunting down endangered species. It's the same thing. But I meant people that I know and talk to, like Asafa, and my mother and father, like Karim. Look, why don't we just leave? I'd rather not. Why? Because there's, there's still a lot of things I haven't looked at. Might as well look at everything now that I'm here. But I don't really feel comfortable. All right, why don't you just leave? What did you say? I didn't say anything, Miriam. He stayed in the museum and I left. <gasps> so what happened? Things were too fragile to withstand the first outing. Yes. That exhibition, it just overwhelmed me. And Brian, he liked it there. He didn't feel there was anything wrong. But you could have explained things to him. Yes, I could have. I think that's what he wanted. Someone to show him something new. To make his trip to Mecca real. But I'm not up to it. I'm not that strong. It's because you're engaged to Karim, isn't it? Yes, it's because of Karim. And because if I break off my engagement with him, my mother would have a heart attack. <laughs> Shadia, you're exaggerating. I'm not. It's bad enough what she went through with my dad. But it's not only my mother. I kept thinking how Karim would never have taken me to that museum. Or any museum. He would have taken me somewhere safe and familiar. Come on. We've got piles of revising to do. And look what I have for you. Oh, no. The exam timetable? It's out already? Yes, but it's a good timetable, Shadia. Just look at the gaps. Three whole days between multivariate analysis and time series. We are going to pass. <laughs> you just have to think positively. In The Museum by Leila Abuleila, Shadia was played by Wendy Baxter, Brian by David Tennant, Miriam by Tracy Ann Oberman, Karim by Ray Emmett Brown, Asafa, David Baker, and the voice from the museum was Gordon Reed. The play was directed by Bruce Young. <laughs>